All right, let's go ahead and find our comfortable seated position. Hey, Brewster. I was just talking about you. You gonna do yoga with us? Okay. So however you would like to sit today is fine with me. I'm gonna sit in hero on my blanket just cause that's what's working for me today. All right, so however you would like to sit is fine. Let's just make ourselves as tall as we can be from the waist up. And start to breathe in and out through the nose, relaxing the jaw, relax the tongue off the roof of the mouth. Lips are closed, but the jaw hangs open so that there's not tension in the face or the head, hopefully. Pull those shoulder blades together behind you. And you're welcome to close your eyes, but you don't have to. If you'd rather not, that's fine. Just find a comfortable, find a spot to gaze at, to let your gaze soften. And continue to breathe, trying to make each round of breath longer than the one that came before. And if you find it's a little hard to concentrate on the breath today, that's all right. Maybe try the counted breath instead. Inhale for three, exhale for six, or maybe four and eight if that's easier. Just to give your mind something to gently focus on. And on the next inhale, let's sit up tall again. Exhale, let the right ear drop towards the shoulder. Shoulders stay relaxed, heart stays lifted. Continuing to breathe. And again, if your head stops much closer to your shoulder naturally, that's fine. This is as far as I can go today. On the inhale, we'll come up through the middle. Exhale, other side. Good. Next inhale, we'll come up. If you need to remove a prop, that's fine. Exhale, up and over to the right. Arm is above the ear or maybe a little bit in front. And 
and open it up towards the sky. If you want to, just take the arm behind you, rotate the chest a bit towards the ceiling. Look wherever is comfortable if you don't want to look up. Good. Next inhale, come up. Exhale, other side. Arm overhead to start. And go ahead and open it a bit if you want. Good, inhale, come on back up. I'm gonna sit in pretzel now, along with all of you probably. So let's inhale tall, exhale, fold with our flat back. Tiny fold to start, just to warm up the whole back and the back of the neck. Next inhale, stretch the spine out nice and long. Maybe you can fold another inch with a flat back and then we'll walk it to the right. Just trying to open the side body a little bit. On the inhale, we'll come through the middle. Exhale, other side. Next inhale, walk up. Exhale, walk it back. Keeping the neck more or less in line with the spine. So we're probably looking at the ceiling a bit here. Just control the weight of the head. Don't let it just fall back. Warming up the front of the neck too. If it hurts your jaw or your neck though, just tuck your chin, it's fine. You still can push up with the heart to open up the chest and the upper arms. Good, let's inhale, walk it up. Exhale, tiny twist to the right. Use your body and the floor as leverage, but not too much, just a little warm up. Looking out over that back shoulder if it's comfortable. Can't look, I can't look left today, so. <laughs> you do you, I'll do me. Next inhale, come through the middle. Exhale, other side, tiny twist. Look out over that back shoulder if it's comfortable.
Good. Inhale, let's come into the middle. And let's actually do our stuff on our belly before we do our airplane stuff today. So we can come in to tabletop and then come on down. I think we'll just try doing the most vigorous part of the warm up at the very end. See how that goes. So now we're in Sphinx, push into the elbows, distribute the weight all the way to the fingertips, press the shoelaces into the mat to protect the low back. Next inhale, extra push, exhale, elbows out, palms together, drop the head, opening the armpits towards the floor into crocodile. Then pull your hands towards the back of your neck to stretch out the triceps. Good, next inhale, hands under shoulders, exhale, curl the chest up off the floor into baby cobra. If you feel like your low back is fine today, you can take your hands back to your hips into half locust and or raise your feet up off the mat. Just listen to your back today and see where it is. Mine is not in a locust mood today. The more weight that is on your hands, the less strain it is on the low back. And when you're ready, we'll press on back into child's pose. Whichever version of child's pose you would like. These can be in or out. Head can be turned to one side or the other. Forehead can be down on the floor or a block or a pillow. If that works out better for your neck. You just want some pressure on the forehead regardless. Arms can be overhead or wrapped around. And just remember that anytime during the practice, if there's a pose you don't want to do, you can come back to child's pose, take a little break, or you can just hang out until we do a pose you want to do. Wherever you are today is totally fine. You don't have to do every pose. Okay, when you're ready, let's press on back up to tabletop. Mr. B is in the loaf position. He's not listening to me. So when you're ready, let's inhale, right arm up. Exhale, thread the needle through. Right cheek rests on the left forearm. Push that right hand away from you. Roll that shoulder under the body. Maybe shift the weight a tiny bit to the right if you need a little extra help opening up the back of the shoulder. Continuing to breathe. And when you're ready, inhale, exhale, press back into our tabletop for a moment. 
Next inhale, lift with the left arm. Exhale, thread the needle. Left cheek on right forearm now. Push the left right hand away from you. No, left hand away from you. Sorry. Maybe shift the weight a little bit to the left to open the back of the shoulder. And when you're ready, let's inhale back up to tabletop. And we can do our cat cows and our airplanes now. So let's do cat cow first. Make sure everything is stacked as best you can. Inhaling for cow and exhaling for cat at your own pace. Remember to keep the shoelaces grounded into the mat. Pulling the ears out and away from the shoulders in cow and releasing the neck totally in cat. And take your time. Just like the opening breath work, we try to slow each round down a bit more. One more round. And then we'll go into our airplane if we want. You can stay in cat-cow if you don't want to do airplane today. That's fine. Just reset your tabletop before you go into your airplane. Really take your time on the lift. Shoelace is staying facing down. One more round, and then you can continue going front to back, or you can switch to opening out to the side. Still trying to make each round longer than the one that came before. When you've had enough, you can go on back into child's pose. If you're still going, let's do one more round on each side, and then we'll all meet in child's pose. Just take your time in child's pose. Nice deep breathing. Send the breath through the whole body. Keep the body warm, but allow the heart rate to come back down a little bit. And when you're ready, we'll press on up into tabletop for a moment, and then we will transition into our downward dog. Push those heels down, release the head, open the armpits, push them towards the feet. Pedal the feet out if you'd like.
Next inhale, look between the hands. Exhale, walk the feet towards the hands until you pop into your forward fold. Bend your knees as much as you need to here. Half the weight or more on the heels. Release the head and neck. Shake it out a little if you need to. On the inhale, big bend in the knees. Come up nice and slow. There's really no amount of speed that's slow enough for me, but hopefully you won't get dizzy. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, let's dive it down. Inhale to flat back. Pull those ears away from the pelvis. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, plant the hands, bend the knees. Exhale, let's send that right foot back. High lunge. You can inchworm your foot until it's under your knee. Drop the back knee and untuck the toes if that's more comfortable for you. Continuing to breathe. Put as much weight in your hands as you need to. If your back knee is down, let's inhale it up. And then everybody exhale, step it forward. Forward fold for a moment. Inhale, plant the hands, bend the knees. Exhale, send the left foot back. Inchworm your foot up front to get it right under your knee. Push the back heel towards the wall behind you. Drop the back knee, untuck the toe if you want. Continuing to breathe. If you're down on that back knee, inhale it up. Everybody exhale together. Step it forward, forward fold. Inhale, big bend in the knees. Come on up. Nice and slow. Exhale, hands in front of heart. Good. Probably nice and warmed up now. So let's do what we need to do to get ready for the standing postures. I'm going to switch. You are probably fine wherever you are. Cool. All right, so ready for standing poses? Let's come to the top corner of our mat in Tadasana. Really squish the entire foot into the mat. Soft bend in the knees. Try not to bow the spine one way or the other, try to keep it neutral. Inhale, you can do namaste hands or you can raise them up. Just remember when arms are up, shoulders are down. <clears throat> so let's inhale tall. Exhale, step straight back with the left foot, turn it at an angle. Widen this stance if you need to, so we can square the hips to the front of the mat. So if that means you have to turn your left foot towards the center line a bit more, don't worry about it, it's fine. Inhale, exhale, bend that front knee till you only see your big toe. So warrior one is ideally up here, but you can be down here too. You can widen the stance out if you need to, but just try to keep those hips square to the front of the mat as best you can. Good. Inhale, arms up if they aren't already. 
Exhale, spin it out, warrior two. Set the feet on the center line of the mat. Exhale, front knee where we can only see our big toe. You're welcome to flip the arms if you want, for as long as you want. Widen the stance as much or as little as you want to. Good. Big inhale, exhale, push it up, sky archer. Look wherever is comfortable if you don't want to look up, but this is where we're stretching ourselves as tall as we can be with this right arm. Inhale tall, exhale, cartwheel the arms, triangle. Keep that front knee a little soft, not holding on to that kneecap. Push the bottom hip towards your back foot. You can look up at your thumb if you want. Next inhale, nice and big. Exhale, bend the knee so it's over the ankle, forearm down. Exhale out and over, extended side angle. Here's one, if you have blocks and you'd rather come onto the block than your thigh, that's totally fine. We just don't wanna collapse onto that front thigh with our torso. We want the space between the torso and the thigh so we can continue to breathe nice and big. Next inhale, big. Exhale, reverse the warrior. Tiny back bend if you want, or you can go straight on up. That's fine. After you get your torso and arms in place, check in with your front knee. Make sure you can only see your big toe. It'll have shifted because your weight shifted back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good. Inhale. Exhale, star. Open towards your left, straight into star. Tiny back bend if you want. Reaching. Big inhale, exhale, dive it down, wide legged forward fold. Release the arms, the torso, the head, and the neck. And we'll do our runner stretches. So option one is just to take your torso over to one leg, hands by that foot, stretch it out. Second option is to bend a knee and send the other toes up towards the sky. If you hyperextend here, either bend the knee a little bit or put a block under there to fill that space. So you can really maximize the stretch for the inner thigh. Big inhale, let's come through the middle. Exhale, other side. Continuing to breathe. <clears throat> Next inhale, let's come to the middle. Like a little frog, heels can be up or down. You can simply squat or you can sit on your block if you want. Arms can be on the floor like you're about to go into crow or you can be with namaste hands. 
Remember, if you're pushing into the inside of your knees, push back on the arms with the knees just to open up the upper back while you're opening the pelvis. Good. Next inhale, let's lean it forward. Weight on the hands. Bring yourself into a cannonball so you can stand up nice and slow. Inhaling it up. Exhaling, hands in front of heart. All right, good. We'll do the other side now. All right, left side now. <clears throat> Let's come up to the top quarter of our mat or so. Get yourself grounded for Tadasana. Slow the breathing back down if you need to. Good. Inhale the arms up either to namaste or overhead. Exhale, let's step back with the right foot. Turn it at a 30 to a 45 degree angle or so. Widen the stance if you need to. Square the hips to the front of the mat. Inhale tall. Exhale, bend that front knee. Look for the big toe. Arms can be here or they can be up. If you reach up, just keep your shoulders relaxed. Warrior one. Next inhale, arms up. Exhale, spin it out. Warrior two. Feet down the center line of the mat. Bend the front knee until you only see the big toe. You can flip if you'd like, as much as you'd like. Big inhale, exhale, sky archer. Reach as tall as you can. Hold the pelvis under the shoulders. Engage the front of the abs. Inhale tall, exhale down to triangle. Push that bottom hip towards the back foot. Straight up with the left hand, no, right hand. Big inhale, exhale, extended side angle. Again, use your block if you'd rather. You can put all the weight you want in the thigh with the forearm down. Otherwise, keep that space open between the torso and the thigh. Keep the breath big. Next inhale, nice and big. Exhale, reverse the warrior. Straight up towards the sky or the tiny back bend, and then reset that front knee. Good. Next inhale, nice and big. Exhale, spin it out into star. Situate your stance so that you can do the goddess squats. So I'm going to face this way because I can turn my head to the right but not the left today. So let's inhale big, exhale, squat it down. Pull those shoulder blades together. Keep breathing throughout. 
Inhale up. Continuing to breathe. On your next exhale, lower it down. Next inhale, come up nice and slow. Continue to breathe. And on your next exhale, lower it down. Last one, let's hold this one a little longer. Maybe a little lower. And when you're ready, inhale it up. Exhale, dive it on down, wide-legged forward fold. I'm skipping this one, but you go ahead. Shake it out. Do whatever, can, uh, whatever additional stretches you might want to do for the pelvis, the hammies, the glutes, the hips here. While we're in this wide-legged forward fold, if you need to do some more runner stretch, go for it. If you want to roll your head out or swing the torso, now's the time. Good, and when you're ready, walk yourself into a cannonball. So you can inhale it up nice and slow. And exhale, hands in front of heart. Good. All right, we'll do tree, and then we'll do the pigeon and the supported bridge. And that should get us right on time for the last twists and stuff. So let's find our Tadasana so we can do our tree. Big inhale, let's shift the weight onto our right foot. Exhale into our kickstand. Bring it on up if you want. You can go into all the different things, arm positions, you can do different things with your feet that aren't really tree, but trees where you start from. <laughs> you wanna do the seated one, that's fine. I think I'll do this one today. But let's just continue to breathe because it really does help. But don't worry if you're wobbling, that means you're doing it right, you're engaging different muscles all the time. If you want to reach out and hold on to a chair or table or something, that's fine. Try to keep the weight up out of this right hip. If you are sinking down into that joint, actively lift it out. When we come out, we'll come out with control. So let's inhale it up, exhale lower down, and shake it out. Good job. Oh, now you do Sphinx Pose. We already did that one. Let's come into our Tadasana again. Big inhale, shift the weight onto the left foot. Exhale, kickstand to start, and then whatever version you would like to do. Keep this knee soft if you can. That way you can engage all the muscles. If you lock that joint, you really will just sort of fall out of it if you lose your balance. If the knee is soft, you can use it to hold your balance and work more muscles. If you wanna go into a different version, if you wanna do the chair thing, not really, it's not chair pose, it just reminds me of sitting in a chair. We need to learn the, the name for this one and then also where you fly the ankle out. If you come out, that's all right. Shake it out, come back in. Continue to breathe. And we'll try to come out with control, so we'll inhale it up. Exhale, lower, and shake it out. Nice work. 
So we'll do our floor poses now. Everybody probably has a block, hopefully. If not, if you have um, a yoga blanket, um, actually the way it's folded right now that Mr. B is on, you don't want it folded all the way up into a quarter. It's like half and then half again. That's almost the perfect height. Um, if you don't have a block, you can also use like uh, pillows from your couch, that kind of stuff. Um, just, we just need to fill the space for pigeon. So even these short blocks, um, they're okay. I, my hips are pretty flexible, so they'll work okay for me. But let's just put a block to our right side, since we'll do the right side first. If you have two, then you can just put them near the top. If you have a different way that you like to come into pigeon, that's fine. Keep forgetting I can't look at you if I'm facing that way. So we're gonna go this way. Um, I like to come into it from down dog, personally. But really, you could just come into it from tabletop or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so if you press into either tabletop or down dog, it gives you the space underneath you to step forward with the right foot, untuck the toe behind you, and I find it easier to go ahead and set that back leg up right now so it doesn't move around and get out of parallel. So just check that it's parallel to the side of your mat. And then lean to the right and adjust that front leg. The ideal is that your shin will be parallel to the top of the mat. I don't know anybody who can do that. But then you can sit on your block. And don't feel bad if you've got to work on it a little bit. That's fine. But absolutely fill this space with something. It's really, really only very hypermobile people who have been doing yoga for years who can sit all the way down and actually still do this pose correctly. And I just don't want you to cause any sort of injury to your legs. If you do this one often, you definitely want to use an assist. So we're up here. If you can and you want to come down, you can. That's fine. You can reach the arms overhead and lay the forehead on the floor with the arms overhead. I think I'm just going to stay here with my palms together. You can also do your hands like we were in Sphinx. This is one that we for a while that's why I keep talking because it's hard to let that hip go you're doing things with all three of the gluteus muscles and the hamstring and the quad there's just a lot of big muscles at, at play here so we got to give them a chance to release When you're ready to come out, we're going to walk up to this point on our hands. Um, exhale and just roll to the right, roll off the block or the blanket or the pillow, whatever you have. Bring that left foot in. That's probably the safest way to come out of it. You don't have to do one of those very athletic, graceful transitions because I'm not doing that. I don't expect anybody to do that. Let's do the other side. So either tabletop or down dog or your preferred method. If it's different than mine, that's fine. Big inhale, exhale, step it forward, left foot. Release the right foot. Get that leg parallel first is my advice. Then work on the left shin. Then fill the space with your crop, whatever that may be. My ankles are extremely, um, it's not even flexible, they're just loose. So 
I have a tendency to let my foot roll. If that's happening to you, try to keep your shoelaces right on the mat and not let that ankle roll. And that's just a lot of things to think about to do pigeon correctly. But because you can hurt yourself easily in pigeon, I just want everybody to build it gradually and then continue to check on it as we hold it. So now if you're ready and you feel okay and you want to come down, that's fine. You can come down to your forearms or you can let your arms go overhead and sink the chest down to the floor, forehead on the floor. Continuing to breathe. Send the breath into that hip if it's really holding on. Send it a little love. And when you're ready, walk it up onto the hands first, and then exhale, roll it off, bring the right leg in to match. Good, perfect. Let's do our supported bridge, and then we'll do our twist and we'll be good. So we start here, um, keep a block, or two nearby. If you have two, um, it's really nice to put one between the knees so that you know that you're keeping your shins and your femurs parallel to each other. So let's roll it on back. Feet are flat, knees are bent. Pull those shoulder blades together underneath you. Hands are down by your sides. Palms into the mat for now. And then we're just going to walk our heels towards our booty. When you're ready, big inhale. Exhale, push the hips up. And then put whatever method of assist you want to use under the base of the spine. You can use your block on the low side, the high side. Maybe the highest side that's pretty far up. Some days I can do it, not today. You can clasp your hands underneath you if you want. If you don't want to use the block so you can work the core more, that's fine too. Just keep those hips pressed towards the ceiling. Try to stay gazing at the ceiling here, you don't really want to roll your head left or right at this point. Continue to breathe. One more round of breath. And then on the next inhale, nice and big push into the feet, lift the hips, remove the prop, exhale, lower, big inhale, exhale, bring the knees in to the chest and roll around a bit. We're just letting the spine get some balance. And then feet down, we'll do our favorite twists. So tee those arms out. Shoulder blades are under us again. Cross the right leg over the left. Scooch the hips and the left foot to the right edge of the mat. Exhale. 
Lower the legs to the left. Adjust your arms and legs as needed, trying to keep the legs crossed so that you stay in the bind. If you want to put a block under that right knee, it's a great idea if that allows you to put some weight into the block and let the low back open. That's a big point of this twist. So if you have low back problems and your low back doesn't want to release, it may be that you need to fill the space between the inside of your right knee and the floor. And then when the block absorbs that weight, the low back may be able to free up a bit. If you want to let your head roll to the right, that's fine. Continuing to breathe, really feel the breath going up and down the spine here. This is a nice little reset for the spine. Actually, it's a big reset for the spine. I should say it's a nice big reset for the spine. And when we're ready to come out, let's uncross the legs first. Push into the bottoms of the feet. Bring the pelvis back to the middle. Shoulder blades are underneath us. Cross the left leg over the right. Scooching the right foot and the hips to the left edge of the mat. Exhale, roll. Legs go to the right. Situate yourself to get balanced. And then again, fill the space between your knee and the floor if you need to. It may be that you need to on one side but not the other. That's totally fine. It's completely normal to not be symmetrical. But never hesitate to fill a space somewhere to create space somewhere else. Continuing to breathe. And let your head roll to the left if you want. And when we're ready, uncross the legs first. Push into the bottoms of the feet to bring yourself back to the middle of the mat and then pick your version of Shavasana. Whatever you would like to do, don't be afraid to use your props. If you want to take a, a Shavasana that's not quite the normal pose, that's fine but you want to keep space in the underarms and the pelvis because that's where there's big lymph nodes. And now that we've massaged them effectively, massage them, we can let them now circulate freely while we lay down and give ourselves a little rest. So you go ahead and stay in Shavasana. Not judging yourself if you find that you have anxiety, something hurts, you're distracted, it's noisy, your phone had a ding while we were practicing or whatever it may be. Just let those things go. Focus your mind on the breath if you need to, if that helps you calm down and get a little centered, that's fine. There's no goal in Shavasana. There's no task you have to accomplish. Do what works for you, but definitely don't skip Shavasana. It's the most important part because not only is it a reward for you, 
It may be the only time during your week that you get to simply lay in stillness and be with your own thoughts, and that's important to do. So just take your time here. Don't worry about whether it's almost time to come out of it. I will give you a cue when it's time to come out.
Maintaining our Shavasana pose. Start to bring some awareness back into the body. Maybe we wiggle our fingers and toes. Make tiny circles with the wrists and ankles. In no hurry. Take control of the breath again. Breathing in and out through the nose, nice and slow. When you're ready, roll onto your side. Curl up in a fetal position. Maybe make a pillow with your arm. And let's just take several breaths in this nice pose of renewal before we go about the rest of our day. And when you're ready, let's use our arms. Press yourself up into a comfortable seated position so we can breathe in and out through the nose, nice and tall, lifting the heart, relaxing the face and the jaw. Filling and emptying the lungs completely. Doing the counted breath if you'd like. When you're ready, we'll flutter the eyes open. Thank you for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste. Hope you have a great rest of your day.